Hi, welcome to my channel, Cards by Kendra. Today I'm bringing you a creative collaboration video with my friend Sierra from Sierra T Designs. A while back, we decided to do a craft supply D stash exchange where we traded with each other and created a card with some of those supplies. So I'm excited to share this steampunk card with you today. First, let me show you all of my crafty goodies that I received from her. I got an alcohol ink applicator and some felt as well as a snowflake punch and some detailed blend, blending tools and a glue sponge. I got some distress ink. I believe this is fired brick. And then also a rubber stamp that says by the sea. This is super cute. This is her adorable card that she sent me along with the package. Um, Sierra and I met through YouTube and she told me about this Facebook group called Team Tiny where members who have less than a thousand subscribers kind of come together and they create crafty videos to help each, help each other's channels grow. Um, and they do this by doing video hops each month. Sierra has since graduated from the group as she now has over a thousand subscribers, but we've become great friends and we still communicate with each other through Facebook all the time. She lives in Canada and I live in Florida, but I love that we can still share our card projects with each other and get advice. She is amazingly talented and I'm so appreciative of her and how much she's taught me over the past few months. So as you can see here, she sent me several different stamp sets. Um, a couple here from Joy Claire Designs. This one is a tropical floral set that's a layering set from Hero Arts. This one is a feather set from 49 Market. Um, there's just a bunch of different stuff in here and I was just overwhelmed. I couldn't decide which one I wanted to use, but this industrial stamp that I just showed you is one that I ended up using for this steampunk card. This is a Hero Arts March monthly kit, the Under the Sea stamp set along with the dies there. This one I believe is um, Mail Delivery, it's Stamping Village. This is a One Cool Pineapple by Simon Sis stamp. And then um, this next one here is another Under the Sea stamp set by Simon Says Stamp. And then this is a stencil that I also used for this card and a couple of paper pads. I'm currently working on some Christmas cards with that paper pad. And then this is another designer paper pack. But I absolutely love everything in this box and I'm super excited to use the supplies. So let's get started. Now off camera, I created um, this background using an embossing folder. It had gears on it. And before I ran it through, um, I had ink blended some brown and some light blue distress ink. But then whenever I covered it up with the gunmetal gray embellishment mousse, it completely covered up my distress oxide blend. So you may see a little bit of it peeking through there, but the embellishment mousse kind of covered all that up. So now here I'm just taking this um, mini time travel stencil, I believe that's what it's called. Um, and I am using some copper, fresh copper embellishment mousse. And I'm applying that over the top with my spatula. So I'm going to set this aside to dry. And now I'm taking a, a new piece of cardstock. This is Simon Hurley's Stark White cardstock. It's 110 pounds and I really like it for ink blending. The ink goes on really smoothly. I've started with antique linen and then next I am adding rusty hinge. I'm using scrapbook.com's um, domed foam applicators. And then for the next color, I am using vintage photo. Now I don't have distress oxide in vintage photo, but I really like how these co colors look together. I thought they kind of looked a little steampunkish if that's even a word. Um, and then on the other end, I am adding weathered wood distress oxide. So now I am taking that industrial 2.0 background stamp and rather than taking it off of that clear plastic, I decided just to lay it down inside of my misty stamping platform. And here I'm just inking that up with the vintage photo distress ink. And next I'm placing that blended piece of cardstock on top and I'm gonna use the door so that I can apply a lot of pressure so that it has a good impression. So here in a minute, you're gonna be like, what in the world is she doing? She has just ruined this entire background that she just made. But I re wasn't really feeling this. Um, so I found this gear frame die set that I have had. I don't remember where I got it, but I ran that through my Big Shot 
and um, I decided to keep that middle piece because I knew I wanted to use it but I wanted the gears to be a little bit shiny so I've taken my distress embossing dabber and I've covered the entire thing with embossing ink and then next I'm covering that with some distress embossing glaze and this is in there um, one of the newer colors the speckled egg it doesn't turn it blue it just kind of gives it a, a nice little blue sheen now I'm heat setting this with my heat gun I let my heat gun heat up for about 30 seconds before I started applying it to the gears and I'm using my long tweezers to hold it because I have burnt my fingers several times while I'm heat embossing so now I've set that aside and here I'm going to take my original background and I'm using the torn edge rectangle dies that I've had. I'm taking the biggest one and then I'm running this through my big shot. To make sure that this cuts where I want it to, I'm just taking a little piece of washi tape and adding it to the corner so that it won't move whenever I run it through. So that it doesn't have a white edge, I'm taking that vintage photo distress ink and I'm just applying it all along the edges here. A lot of the other steampunk cards that I've looked at has lots of layers. So I went through my things and tried to find different items that I could layer up on the card. And because I have this cork, the square cork and a piece of burlap, I wanted the cork to be a little bit darker than the burlap so that it would have a little bit of contrast so I'm just adding that vintage photo to the edges of that cork as well. So now I'm making my card base. I am taking a piece of 8.5 by 11 black heavyweight cardstock and I've trimmed it off on the ends so that I can make a 5 by 7 card base. And here I'm just using my bone folder so that it will have a good nice crease. Now here I'm using a piece of um, I believe this was called crushed metal cotton paper from tonic and I'm trimming this down to be a quarter of an inch smaller than my card base and um, that's going to be my first layer and I wanted to have some more gears and I didn't um, have any copper paper so I'm making some um, using a piece of silver cardstock and I'm applying some more of that fresh copper on top and I'm taping it down here to my glass mat so that it can dry flat because it'll tend to curl up on you. Now off camera I've taken that middle piece that came out of that gear frame and I've used the smallest of the torn edge rectangle dies and I've cut out a rectangle here and then I've um, inked it up, inked up my stamp from the geared up garage stamp set that says uh, all geared up to celebrate. I've inked it up with some Ranger archival ink and then I coated that with some clear embossing powder and then I heat set it and then of course I took the vintage photo and added that along the edges and here I've just layered up the different types of paper that I've already used so that I can make the sentiment stand out and then I'm just gluing it all together with my tape runner. Now I'm taking my crocodile here and I am making very small holes so that I can use these gunmetal eyelets on all four corners. So now that I've let that fresh copper embellishment mousse dry on that cardstock, I'm taking some separate little gear dies that I've had and I have cut out some, some more. And now it's time to assemble the card. So my first layer is that uh, crushed metal cotton paper. Then I am gluing down my um, cork piece and I'm using Nouveau Deluxe adhesive glue. Um, I did decide to use some double sided tape on the burlap because I wasn't sure that the deluxe adhesive would hold it, but I added both just to be just just to make sure. So here I've added some foam squares all along the back of my um, gear background and I've attached that on top. My glue sponge, um, it said that you have to tilt it or turn it upside down and let it sit for an hour. So I had to do that so that the glue would come to the top and I am attaching all of these gear pieces with that glue sponge. It was pretty handy. So thank you, Sierra, because this is a really awesome handy tool. I forgot to mention that I cut apart that frame and just used the gears. So here I'm just taking a foam square to pop up the right hand side of that sentiment since it's going to be off of that background that I already made 3D and then I'm using the liquid glue on the left hand side. And here I'm just finishing this off with some rose gold liquid pearls. And this finishes up my card for today. 
It's a lot different than any of the other cards I've ever made, but I think it turned out pretty cool. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, don't forget to check out Sierra's video. The link is in the description box below. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe to my channel. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest at Cards by Kendra. Thank you guys so much for watching today, and I hope you have a wonderful day.